Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. This videotape will demonstrate the techniques necessary to produce periapical radiographs. At the end of this tape, you should be able to state the basic relationship between the tooth, film, and x-ray beam, state the areas visualized on each periapical radiograph in a complete mouth series, describe the steps necessary to produce periapical radiographs using the long cone paralleling technique, and produce a complete mouth series of periapical radiographs meeting the following criteria. Each radiograph should show an undistorted view of the featured teeth in their entirety, plus at least five millimeters of bone apical to the root end. The position of the alveolar crest of bone should be shown in a true relationship to the cemento enamel junction of the tooth. The interproximal contact areas of the featured teeth should be visualized without overlap. The best technique to meet the criteria for a good periapical radiograph is the long cone paralleling technique. In this method of radiography, the film is placed parallel to the long axis of the tooth and held in place by a foam bite block. The central ray of the x-ray beam is aimed at the center of the film in a direction that is perpendicular to both tooth and film. A complete mouth set of periapical radiographs is designed to show an adequate view of all the teeth and surrounding bone. To accomplish this, a series of 18 films is used, nine each in both maxilla and mandible. In each arch, five number zero films are used in the anterior region. The middle film shows the two central incisors, while the next two on either side feature the lateral incisor and cuspid respectively. Each posterior quadrant is radiographed with two number two films, one covering the bicuspids and first molar, the other the second and third molar. Because of the curvature of the arch, it is frequently impossible to show on the same film both mesial and distal contacts of the teeth unobstructed by overlaps. An effort is made to open the mesial contact of the featured teeth on each film. In this way, all contacts will eventually be opened in the complete series of films. A series of interproximal or bite wing radiographs is frequently made at the same time as the periapical radiographs. These are placed in the center of the film mount. There are five steps necessary in making a periapical radiograph. Position the film, select the vertical angulation, select the horizontal angulation, center the beam on the film packet, make the exposure. For radiographing all areas of the mouth, the edge of the film packet containing the embossed dot is placed into the groove of the foam bite block. The number zero films are placed vertically and the number two films horizontally. The film and bite block are placed in the patient's mouth lingual to the teeth to be examined. The film is positioned parallel to the long axis of the teeth, the free end touching the palate. The patient bites gently on the end of the block to stabilize the film. Note the relatively long distance between the tooth and the film, necessitated by the anatomy of the mouth. The foam bite block is designed to hold the film perpendicular to the base of the block. Since the central ray should be perpendicular to the film and tooth, it should be directed in a line parallel to the base of the bite block. The black lines on the cone indicate the position of the central ray. Note that the line on the side is parallel to the top edge of the cone. To select the vertical angulation, position the cone of the x-ray machine between your eye and the bite block 
making the top edge of the cone parallel to the base of the block. The horizontal angulation should be selected so that the X-ray beam will be directed through the mesial interproximal area of the teeth being examined. To avoid the problem of cone cutting, not covering the entire film with the X-ray beam, the center of the beam should be aimed at the center of the film packet. Because the center is sometimes hard to see, the gum line of the tooth can be used as the approximate center of the film. The cone should be in its final position about one inch from the patient's face. To avoid production of a lip line shadow on the finished radiograph, the patient should close the lips over the bite block. The operator sets the exposure time and, standing in a safe place, holds down the timer switch of the x-ray machine until the exposure has been made. The same procedure is performed similarly in all areas of the mouth. Film placement for each area will be demonstrated. Film placement is similar to that for central incisors, except that the film is rotated around the arch until the lateral incisor is centered on the film. If the bite block is unstable, a cotton roll can be used between the block and the teeth of the opposing arch to provide a larger biting surface. The central ray should be aimed to open the contact area between the lateral and central incisors. This film is positioned similarly to those for both central and lateral incisors, except that the cuspid is centered on the film. The contact area between cuspid and lateral incisor should be opened. The anterior edge of the film should extend to the center of the cuspid. To get the film parallel to the long axis of the teeth, the film must be placed at or beyond the midline. The patient bites on the end of the long bite block. Film placement for the maxillary second and third molars is similar to that for the bicuspids. However, the anterior edge of the film should be no farther forward than the middle of the second bicuspid. The film must be placed under the tongue and parallel to the teeth. Occasionally, a gentle rocking movement of the film during placement is helpful in allowing the muscles of the floor of the mouth to relax and accept the entire film. The lateral incisor is centered on this film. In all other aspects, film placement is like that for the central incisors. An attempt is made to open the contact between lateral and central incisor. For the mandibular cuspid, the film is rotated around the arch until the cuspid is centered on the film. The contact between cuspid and lateral incisor should be opened. Because the teeth are almost vertical in the posterior region of the mandible, the film can be placed much closer to the teeth. A shortened bite block should be used for the mandibular bicuspids and molars. The anterior edge of this film should be in the middle of the cuspid. Occasionally, this is difficult to accomplish because of the anatomy of the floor of the mouth. In these cases, a small bend in the lower anterior corner of the film may be required. The shortened bite block is used to hold the films for this area of the mouth. In order to view the entire third molar, the anterior edge of the film should be generally no farther forward than the middle of the second bicuspid. To make a good periapical radiograph using the long cone paralleling method, the film must be positioned parallel to the teeth being examined, and the X-ray beam must be directed perpendicular to both tooth and film. To achieve this, the operator must perform five steps. 
Position the film parallel to the tooth. Select the vertical angulation perpendicular to the film. Select the horizontal angulation to open the mesial interproximal areas of the teeth being examined. Center the beam on the packet. Make the exposure. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.